Oh, hello again. I've been reading up on Data East in another amazing book from Hardcore Gaming 101. Now, Data East made some amazing arcade games during the 80s and 90s. So what I've done is I've picked out my top 10 and here they are. At number 10, we have a prehistoric themed action platformer, Joe and Mac Caveman Ninja. The game hit arcades in 1991 and sees our fearless caveman heroes being tasked with rescuing a group of kidnapped women. It was the incredibly colorful cartoon style presentation that first drew me to this game. It really stood out at the time and its simple and responsive controls made this game really enjoyable. There are power-ups that can be collected, a decent variety of enemies, and some amazing boss fights. Joe and Mac is a great example of what Data East were producing at the time, and the game received plenty of quality home ports too. At number 9 we have another game released in 1991, this time the post-apocalyptic beat-em-up Too Crude. One or two players take to the streets, kicking, punching and throwing oversized objects at anyone that stands in their way. There were far better beat-em-ups already on the scene by the time Too Crude was released, but the game does have a lot of character with interesting and often crazy looking enemies and some nice stage design. It does get a bit repetitive at times, and certain enemies seem to take forever to defeat. But Too Crude is definitely worth checking out if you get a chance, and there was also a very impressive port for the Sega Mega Drive. Cat. At number 8, I've gone with one of Data East's Neo Geo releases. The disc throwing sports simulation Wind Jammers, released in 1994. The game plays a lot like air hockey, with each player aiming to score points by throwing the disc past their opponent and into the goal area. There are six playable characters, each with their own strengths and weaknesses, and there are several different court styles to play on. It's one of those games that is incredibly fun to play in two-player, and things often tend to become pretty competitive. Windjammers is definitely worth checking out, and with the re-release on modern consoles adding online multiplayer, it's a great way to experience it. At number 7, I've gone with another game that appeared on the Neo Geo hardware, Karnov's Revenge, a one-on-one -on -one fighting game released in 1994. This was the sequel to Fighter's History, a game that resembled Street Fighter 2 so closely that Capcom sought legal action against Data East. The characters are well designed, and the fast-paced and responsive controls makes the game a real pleasure to play. When I first purchased a Neo Geo AES console, this was the game that came with it, so I spent lots of time playing it. It was far from being a real competitor to the likes of Street Fighter and the King of Fighters, but Karnov's Revenge looks and plays great and is a solid entry in the fighting game genre. At number 6, I've chosen Midnight Resistance, a 1989 run and gun game which sees one or two players on a mission to rescue their kidnapped family. What made this game stand out was the use of a rotatable joystick, enabling the player to shoot in different directions. Because of this, the only true way to experience the arcade game would be on an original cabinet, which these days is fairly unlikely to happen. Keys can be collected that can be used to buy weapon power-ups at the end of each stage. Once the new weapon runs out of ammo, you revert back to the standard gun. Power up. 
The graphics, stage design and amazing music make Midnight Resistance a truly iconic arcade game, and one which I have great memories of playing. I've gone with Sly Spy as my pick for number 5. This side-scrolling action game is clearly inspired by James Bond, from the main character and stage locations to the gadgets and bosses. The action is fast-paced and our character is equipped with a standard handgun to deal with the enemy threats. The standard weapon can be upgraded to what is known as a golden gun, but rather than being inspired by Scaramanga's weapon in the Man with the Golden Gun film, it shoots fireballs. There is a bit of variety in level design, which sees the player riding a motorcycle and swimming underwater in some sections. This variety, combined with the slick controls and obvious references to James Bond, makes Sly Spy an absolute joy to play. <laughs> At number 4 I've gone with Captain America and the Avengers, a side-scrolling beat-em-up based on the comic book Heroes that was released in 1991. Captain America, Iron Man, Hawkeye and Vision team up to fight against the Red Skull and a cast of supervillains. Each character has their own moveset and special attacks, with cameo appearances from other Avengers characters providing power-ups along the way. It's a very simple beat-em-up, but does have a lot of character, and the variety of bosses from the Marvel Universe keeps things interesting. When it comes to comic book arcade games, this isn't a patch on Konami's X-Men but Captain America and the Avengers is still great fun, and if you're a fan of scrolling beat-em-ups, I'd highly recommend it. Robocop is another one of those Data East games I played a lot in arcades, Robocop. and it's my pick for number 3. Based on the 1987 film of the same name, Robocop arrived in arcades in 1988 and is yet another side-scrolling action game. You take to the streets of Detroit looking to put a stop to criminal activity, starting off with just your fists and drawing your gun in a recreation of an iconic moment from the film. Data East did a great job of capturing the look and feel of the source material, including memorable set pieces, boss battles and coming up against Ed 209. Robocop is an all-time classic and will always be a game that I love going back to. You are under arrest. You are under arrest. At number 2 I've gone with Night Slashers, a side-scrolling beat-em-up released in 1993. Up to three players can take on the challenge, which pits you against all manner of zombies, mutants and monsters. The three selectable characters all have their own personalities, movesets and elemental attacks, giving the game a decent amount of variety. I didn't discover this game until about 10 years after it was originally released, so unfortunately I was never able to experience it in the arcade. The game added more complexity to the genre, had incredible style and an awesome soundtrack. It's definitely one worth checking out. At number 1, I've chosen Bad Dudes vs Dragon Ninja. I remember this arcade machine being everywhere when it was released back in 1988, and it was one of those games I'd always head over to on trips to seaside arcades. 
It's a simple beat-em-up which sees two bad dudes on a mission to rescue the US president. Punches and kicks are your main form of attack, but certain enemies drop weapons during the game, along with time and energy pickups. The graphics, stage design and music bring back so many nostalgic memories for me, from fighting on top of a moving truck to battling the multiplying green ninja in the sewers. This was one of my favourite arcade games when I was growing up, and is one I still love going back to on a regular basis. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to let me know your thoughts in the comments section below and subscribe to the channel for future content.